All right, friends, it's time for another Sunday School with Miss Vicki. I left you hanging in our last Sunday School lesson with Paul. Remember, Paul had been in Jerusalem and he was preaching there and people heard him preach and they got so worked up. There was a riot that started and they were beating him up and then Paul got arrested and the guards were going to get ready to beat up Paul because they wanted to hear why he was in so much trouble. So they were trying to make him confess and just as they were ready to start um, hurting him, he said, but I'm a Roman citizen and that was such a huge deal because that meant that they couldn't um, beat him up and he also got other special privileges. So then he was thrown in jail for a while and he met this man named Felix who was the leader of that region and Felix brings him to court and then sends him back and brings him to court and sends him back for two years. And then Felix isn't in charge anymore and a man named Festus is in charge. And Festus has no idea what to do with Paul because this is just craziness. So um, Paul says, well, I want to talk to Caesar. And that would be kind of like if we said, hey, I want to take my case to the Supreme Court because I want to hear what they have to say. So Caesar is like the, the ruler of the whole Roman Empire, right? He's a really important guy. And Paul can only go see Caesar because he is a Roman citizen. So Paul says, I want to see Caesar. Festus is like, I don't know what to do. And then his buddy Agrippa comes and Paul lays it all out for Agrippa and gives Agrippa a chance to follow Jesus. And Agrippa sadly says no. So Paul goes back to jail. But now we are ready for our story. If you are going to follow along, we got a lot of verses we're going to read today. We're going to start in Acts 27. We are going to look at... 27. So they're going to get ready to set sail for Rome. How do you sail for Rome? You need a boat, right? So 27, 9. They're getting ready. They're on the boat. Here's our boat. Here's our ocean. All right, we'll put them in the ocean there. They're sailing and they stopped a bunch of places and they got supplies and then they got on another boat and then they got on another boat. And 27.9, the last part says, the weather was becoming dangerous for sea travel because it was so late in the fall and Sp Paul spoke to the ship's officers about it. Men, he said, I believe there is trouble ahead if we go on. Shipwreck, loss of cargo and danger to our lives as well. But the officer in charge of the prisoners listened more to the ship's captain and owner than to Paul. And since Fair Havens was an exposed harbor, that's where they were, that was the city, a poor place to spend the winter, most of the crew wanted to go to Phoenix, further up the coast of Crete, and spend the winter there. So they were going to travel, but everybody wanted to travel and stay, get stuck in a nicer place. They didn't want to get stuck in a cold, yucky place. So they get in a boat. There's a guard. It's getting late in the year. Paul says, hey guys, I don't think we should do this. What do you think is going to happen? All right, I'm going to look at verse 13. 27, 13. When a light wind began blowing from the south, the sailors thought they could make it. So they pulled up anchor and sailed close to the shore of Crete. But the weather changed abruptly. That means the weather changed quickly and a wind of typhoon strength called a northeaster burst across the island and blew us out to sea. The sailors couldn't turn the ship into the wind, so they gave up and let it run into the gale. The sailors can't control their boat because the wind is so strong. All right, we're gonna jump ahead. The, the storm blew and stormed and just was terrible, and it went on for many, many days. And it was getting so dangerous, the crew decided to start throwing their supplies overboard. They took their cargo and they threw it out to sea so the boat would be lighter. So if you're following along, I'm going to look at verse 20. The terrible storm raged on for many days, blotting out the sun and the stars until at last all hope was gone. No one had eaten for a long time. Finally, Paul called the crew together and said, Men, you should have listened to me in the first place and not left Crete. You would have avoided all this damage and loss. They didn't listen to Paul, did they? What's going to happen now? What did he say was going to happen? He said they were going to be shipwrecked. He said they were going to lose their cargo. He said they could lose their lives. Here's what he says next. 
but take courage. None of you will lose your lives, even though the ship will go down. For last night, an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve stood beside me and said, Don't be afraid, Paul, for you will surely stand trial before Caesar. What's more, God in his goodness has granted safety to everyone sailing with you. So take courage, for I believe God. It will be just as he said, but we will be shipwrecked on an island. <laughs> I mean, there's good stuff there, right? Take heart, we're not going to die, but we are going to be shipwrecked. I don't know, man. <clears throat> this, is, this is pretty crazy. All right, let's see what happens next. About midnight, remember that's way past my bedtime, and I bet it's past yours too. About midnight on the 14th day of the storm, 14 days. How many weeks is that? Two weeks of storms. Ugh. Oh. Sounds pretty crazy. Uh, we were driven across the Sea of Adria. The sailors sensed land was near. They dropped a weighted line and found the water was 120 feet deep. But a little later, they measured again and found it was only 90 feet deep. So it's getting shallower. What happens to boats in shallow water? Let's find out. At this rate, they were afraid we would soon be driven against the rocks along the shore, so they threw out four anchors from the back of the ship and prayed for daylight. Then the sailors tried to abandon ship. What does abandon ship mean? Get out of there! They tried to abandon the ship. They lowered the lifeboats as though they were going to put out anchors from the front of the ship. But Paul said to the commanding officers and the soldiers, you will all die unless the sailors stay aboard. So the soldiers cut the ropes to the lifeboats and let it drift away. There goes the lifeboat. Goodbye, lifeboat. <sighs> Just as day was dawning, Paul urged everyone to eat. You have been so worried. You haven't touched your food for two weeks, he said. Please eat something now for your own good. Not a hair on your heads will perish. No one's going to get hurt. No one's, no one's going to, uh, no one's going to die, is what he's saying there. Then he took some bread, gave thanks to God before them all, and broke off a piece and ate it. Then everyone was encouraged and began to eat, all 276 of us who were on board. 276 people were on the boat with Paul. After eating, the crew lightened the ship further by throwing the cargo of wheat overboard. So they're throwing all of their supplies over the board, overboard. <clears throat> when morning dawned, they didn't recognize the coastline, but they saw a bay with a beach and wondered if they could get to shore by running the ship aground. So they cut the anchors and left them in the seas. Then they lowered the rudders, raised the foresail, and headed toward the shore. Are they going to make it? But they hit a shoal and ran the ship aground too soon. The bow of the ship, the front of the ship, stuck fast while the stern or the back of the boat was repeatedly smashed by the force of the waves and began to break apart. The soldiers wanted to kill the prisoners to make sure they didn't swim ashore to escape. So not only are they getting shipwrecked, now the soldiers are saying, hey, maybe we should kill our prisoners so they don't get away. Oh my goodness. But the commanding officer wanted to spare Paul, so he didn't let them carry out their plan. Then he ordered all who could swim to jump overboard first and make for land. The others held on to planks or debris from the broken ship, so everyone escaped safely to the shore, just like Paul said, he, said it would happen. And how did Paul know that? Because God told him. All right, so now they're shipwrecked. We got to figure out what's going to happen next. I am going to leave you hanging, but we got to know what happens here. <clears throat> so now we're on to chapter 28. Let's get our island here. Here we go. We've got some land back there. Okay, their boat is all over the place. Their boat is in pieces, isn't it? Okay, there's some nice land. Let's uh, give them a palm tree. Let's make it look a little tropical. There we go. Okay, so 
Once we were safe on shore, we learned we were on the island of Malta. The people of the island were very kind to us. It was cold and rainy. We just have to use our imaginations because it is super sunny in our picture, isn't it? <clears throat> it was cold and rainy, so they built a fire on the shore to welcome us. So there's a fire. And here's our buddy Paul. Paul was gathering sticks. As Paul gathered an armful of sticks and was laying them on the fire, a poisonous snake, driven out by the heat, bit him on the hand. Sounds terrible. The people of the island saw it hanging from his hand and said to each other, a murderer, no doubt, though he escaped the sea, justice will not permit him to live. They thought that Paul was a murderer and that this, this snake was going to make sure he got his punishment. But Paul shook off the snake into the fire and was unharmed. There we go. The people waited for him to swell up or suddenly drop dead. But when they had waited a long time and saw that he wasn't harmed, they changed their minds and decided he was a god. Who else was with him on shore? They're going to have a soldier with him, all right? We'll move Paul up here. And then there were people from Malta. That guy's kind of close to the fire. He'll be okay. Okay? So they thought Paul was now a god because he survived this snake attack. Near the shore where we landed was an estate belonging to Publis, the chief official of the island. He welcomed us and treated us kindly for three days. As it happened, Publis's father was ill with fever and dysentery. Paul went in and prayed for him. What happens when Paul prays? People get healed. And laying his hands on him, he healed him. Then all the other sick people on the island came and were healed. As a result, we were showered with honors. And when the time came to set sail, people supplied us with everything we needed for the trip. So Paul is not yet to Caesar, but he's getting closer. And it is bumpy along the way. You know, I tell you that God has a plan for your life, and that is 100% true. But sometimes the plans that he has for us get to be a little bumpy, kind of like Paul's. But as we see time and time and time and time and time again, God is always with Paul. And we know that with God, everything is possible. So when there's a bad situation going on, we know that we're going to turn out okay from it. God's going to take that situation and he's going to use it to help us get to know him better, to help us see who he is better, or in all kinds of amazing ways that we can't even predict. I bet you Paul had no idea any of this was going to happen when he was on the road to Damascus. Friends, Miss Wendy and I love you. We miss you. God made you, and he has a plan for your life. I hope you're ready for it. See you next time.